We are live. Let me see. Going to my page. Mm-hmm. I shared a few places. Share it in the all right. And here we go. the world we are live here via facebook and youtube welcome ladies tasia and diva welcome thank you thank you hi <laughs> we are awaiting pastor charles if you guys are tuning in on facebook and on youtube um you're more than welcome to hit the share button um as a matter of fact we hope that you will hit the share button uh during the production today we will be taking live questions and live comments so in the chat, while you type and everything, we'll be able to see you, love on you, all that kind of good stuff. How should we start the show out today, y'all? Want to start the show out a little unusual? Let's go right. Let's do it. <laughs> let's go right in. Let's 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 hear from this young lady right here, y'all. I, I, Got you in a trance Till the point can't even lift your hands It gets overwhelming sometimes Can't even see the light of day Don't forget the master made a plan If you fall, he's got you in his hands Don't be discouraged It's gonna be alright, so
is indifferent to the swift nor the strong But to the one who endures to the end Yes, the end, yes was Tasia Woods, y'all. Tasia Woods, y'all. What'd he do? <laughs> hey. Hey. So for some reason, I can't see my chat thing over here. Something's going on, but uh, Tiffany sends her love. We got Dwayne Johnson watching. We got about 10 viewers. Uh, Tasia Woods, let's go ahead and start with you. Uh, for those That's of you who right. do not know Tasia Woods, see, I did this to Diva the other night. I said, um, <clears throat> who is Diva? Look at she laughing. <laughs> So who is Tasia Woods? Tasia Woods is a nobody trying to tell anybody about somebody who can save everybody. Come on, oh, here, Charlie. Come on, Charlie. <laughs> I really? am. Uh, I'm obviously. I'm, I am a wife. I'm a mother. Um, I'm a minister of music at uh, New Dawn Christian Village. Uh, I am an artist in my own right and my own form. Um, I wear many dresses. I won't say hats. I mean, I wear many dresses. Uh, um, right now, uh, the primary focus is being a mother and ministering to my family. You know, that's the first uh, ministry is your family. So uh, creating and setting that foundation has been my focal point, but um, never negating uh, the artist side of me. Um, yeah, I love God. I love uh, just singing his praises. Um, worship is my lifestyle. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. And just being an example of Christ. Um, if I don't know how to, you know, if you don't know how to communicate to people, like you're not really uh, savvy with talking to people about Christ, um, the best thing you can do is be an example of Christ through your walk um, and through your lifestyle. So that's what I've been doing. You know something, before we go to Diva, it's something that you said, um, it just really, so you said worship is a lifestyle. Yes. Uh, we have a lot of people who actually think, you know, worship is a platform. I know. Right. No. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. you actually love what you're saying about not. You know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Can, now, can you, um, can you share with some of the, the people out there who who they may not even know what worship is. Mm -hmm. what, what what is worship? Well, to me, um, it's just how you modelize Christ on an everyday basis. I don't speak about the things that I do behind closed doors because uh, you know scripturally it, it talks about you know praying in the secret place and doing things privately, and God will reward you reward you um, openly. You know so. Um, you know, what does that, what does that look like? You know, maybe um, helping someone who may be in need of, of food or, um, you know, just a safe haven to come to and to rest their heads or, you know, just looking for someone to talk to and just being there and uh, not being judgmental in a way like you're superior than them or you're better than them. Um, right. But, you know, we do have a mandate too to judge um, righteously, you know, um, if we see our brother or sister falling by the wayside, you know, it's, it's definitely like, you know, we can tell them, hey, this is not the right way to go. This is not the right way to do things. You need to, you know, come on back. And this is this is the way to go about doing things. Um, and, you know, uh, just be an example of Christ. What does that look like? He served, you know, he came to serve. You know, so he, I'm not too big to serve others, to serve people. And, um, you know, I can go outside and pick up some trash if I see that, you know, my, my community is looking kind of raggedy. It's, it's nothing to go and um, pick some trash up off the street, you know, just so yeah. things look clean. And um, someone may be walking past me with me going up about my day and they look a little down. You know, it's OK to tell them to pick their head up. It's OK to, to tell them that, you know, Jesus loves you and you know, I'm praying for you, or I'm thinking about you, or you're beautiful, you know, I always tell my girls, like, when they see people in the street, it can be a, a, a random guy, or it can be a random woman or a girl who may be uh, wearing a certain hairstyle that, that, um, that looks cute.
Hold on, y'all. We got a few technical difficulties, but they'll be right back. Hold on. Hold on. Let me do something right quick for you. We back, we back, we back. We had a few uh, difficulties. She'll be right back, you guys. Uh, so as we get Tasia back, let's go ahead and talk to the diva. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I want to see how long I can hold that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, got, I, got, I want to see how long I can hold that. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. Okay, so it's the heat, y'all. It's the heat, y'all. I'm in the prayer closet. It's a little hot in here. Come on, so, yes, it's warm. Well, for Tasia to come on back. Uh, let's let's talk. Cause today we are uh, we focused on uh, the two artists from Forward Management Group, Tasia Woods and Mikael Diva Ruffinelli. I think I said it right this time. Hey. Hey. You sounded very Italian when you said it too, Raffinelli. <laughs> <laughs> All you guys on Facebook land. Uh, uh, Dwayne Johnson said, "As a minister of music, what does worship look like after this pandemic?" See, he's starting something on here now. She's gonna be back, uh, uh, Dwayne, to watch to watch that. But we're gonna move to thank you for sharing the air, my godson. He saw me in here sweating. So, um, the next guest is Diva. Um, I give you the same question I gave uh, Tasia. Who is Diva? <laughs> Diva is a spoken word artist. I am a motivational speaker, inspirational speaker, mo encourager, and I am a minister in my own way. I minister through poetry, the gift that God has given me, because poetry and spoken word is a ministry as well. Because I yes, give all yes. honor to God. I can't even have the gift without him. I'm also a mom. Um, there, I wear, like Tasia said, many dresses. In my way, I yes. love to wear a dress, baby, a good old dress. <laughs> Yeah, we would just start wearing dresses, so I um, mean, uh, come on, somebody, just start it. <laughs> and you fly, baby, you fly. <laughs> thank you, darling, thank you, darling. So before we, uh, Tasia, while you took a little break, we had, we're going to come back to Dwayne Johnson's uh, question later. He said, as minister of music, what does worship look like after this pandemic? So you chew on that for a minute. Okay, and then we're gonna finish talking to uh to Diva. So you said you minister through poetry. Yes, poetry. What is poetry? Poetry is what I, I'm sure there is an a, a absolute sign, you know, dictionary definition. But I'm gonna tell you what poetry means to me. A poetry is an art form that it that you have is drawn in words, is written mm -hmm. words, and and just like an artist who uses uh, a pencil or an artist that uses a, uses a brush. I use my word, I write my words or I pen my words. I speak the words that come from my heart, my mind that God gives to me or that I'm inspired to do. So poetry is the, I believe the use of words to express an art form. Okay, okay. So, um, you know, I was trying to upload the video that you did. Uh, I was made for this. And I was just like, why is it not loading? Why is it not loading? <laughs> so we're gonna say that because you know we got a little poetry night going on kind of thing. But if you can, um, can you share some stuff with us? Can we, you know, we'll put your picture on the screen and you kind of share with us. Can you give us a piece or something? Yes, I have to pick up my phone if you don't mind. So <laughs> or we'll put your picture up, Diva. See how we just slid her in the middle, Tasia? We just slid her right over. Uh huh. I love it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Okay, this is called "I Won't Waste Time," and uh, 
real quick little spill. I was part of a poetry group, which Eva, we, you know, we talked about the other day, had that beautiful uh, broadcast. And this is one of the prompts. So I'm going to, I really uh, wrote this and I, um, regarding in sharing with the group. So I want to share it here. Okay. Frivolous thoughts that turn to frost, frozen and breakable, tapped and shattered into a million pieces, a scattered thesis I called waste, and now they are liquid. And I'm chasing pools of condensation, trying to get those thoughts back I took for granted. Ideas that floated in on daydreams, schemes and man Uh, uh, guess what? Hold on. We're coming back. We're coming back. See, I was trying to interrupt your poem, girl. I'm trying to interrupt your poem. You back, Diva? Uh-oh, uh -oh, I'm here. You can you hear me? You trying to interrupt your poem. Let's start over. Let's go. We ready You for got it. it. You got it. Frivolous thoughts that turn to frost, frozen and breakable. Tapped and shattered into a million pieces, a scattered thesis I called waste, and now they are liquid. And I'm chasing pools of condensation, trying to get those thoughts back I took for granted. Ideas that floated in on daydreams, schemes and manipulated life work to make this artwork come to life. These ideas transcended time and space before their time. A crime has been committed. I committed them not to paper under pen so I can't remember them. I'm chasing down levels of afterthoughts, trying to find the original ideas. Come here, come here, come here. Files on top of files of days and weeks. What was I thinking on that day and this day and that day? I wasted away, wasted away on distractions. It just don't want us to finish this porn, y'all. What's going oh on? God. It just don't want us to finish this porn. You see? They don't want us to. They don't want. They don't want, they want to be great. But that. But you know something? That's all right. That's all that right. Okay. You know, Dwayne Jones gave you a. That just means y'all gonna have to buy her CD when it's time about that. That was that was a. Um, <laughs> That was a snippet. Y'all only get a little bit. Just get a little bit. Um, Dwayne Johnson asked a question. He said, Mikhail, you're an awesome poet. Where do you get your inspiration from? Thank you. I love you, brother. Um, my inspiration comes from a lot of different places. Uh, I can tell you where it started. I, my poetry was birthed from a painful place. And, but it mm -hmm. hasn't always been about pain, but I'm grateful for that experience because it birthed in me a gift that I don't think I would have discovered, you know, unless I went through what I went through. And right. so my inspiration has come from everything from when I've been sad, when I've, I, I can look at a TV show sometimes and like, oh, yes. You know, I think much like when, when we're out in the world or we're looking at something and uh, I remember one time I was sitting in the car and I looked at the tree just swaying and I was sitting and I started swaying with it and a piece mm -hmm. just started flowing from me. And so I get my inspiration, I say, from the world around me. I've been mm -hmm. inspired to write because of my children, because of feeling love, because of feeling hated, you know, because of feeling uh, you know, less than who I am. I, I've written, I believe God has used me to write myself out of a place where he, there were some places I needed to heal in, you know, so mm -hmm. that I could express and it would be an opener to me being able to minister to other women and men who are dealing with some battles of self-esteem and confidence. Mm. Okay. Okay. 
So let's go back to uh, Tasia because you guys are getting ready to do a um, a virtual concert on Saturday. This Saturday at two p.m. It's going to be live on Facebook and live on Instagram. Yeah. Um, and uh, Dwayne Johnson had a question for Tasia. That question was: As a minister of music, what does worship look like after this pandemic? That's a really great question. I haven't really like, um, I really, I, I have no really solid answer for that. But um, for me, it's just really been doing what I've been doing, you know, or, um, you know, just like I said before, just, you know, being that example. And um, it looks like this is like our new normal. It's kind of like, I don't know, scary to say, but it's looking like the new normal, you know, to to utilize um, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ through um, uh, through the social media outlets or what have you. Um, and a lot of churches have been doing their praise and worship um, and services via live stream. And um, it has forced us and pushed us into a place where we can actually share um, the gospel and share worship and share praise and share all that through to the to the entire world, you know, whereas we were just in a, a building, you know, hoping someone walks in or inviting people in and sharing the good news with them. Um, so I've been connecting, you know, just by being an example, like serving others is a, a big factor, is a big, a major thing to me um, in my life and for my lifestyle, um, particularly and serving others and um, just encouraging people wherever they may be in their, um, in their life, you know, there are people that don't know him or choose not, I, I'm around people who really choose not to serve God, but because mm -hmm. of the way that I am, um, they're like, wow, you know, um, if this is what Christianity looks like, or this is what a believer looks like, you know, I may even consider, you know, um, looking into the word or, you know, there's sometimes where they're like, well, can you pray for me? And I'm just like, sure, you know, um, let's do it, you know, and they don't believe in God at all. So mm -hmm. um, it's, it's just, you know, we I, I just don't have a solid answer for, for that. You know, we've just been going day to day, just hoping and praying that, you know, um, this whole situation would die down. But um, um, what it looks like for me right now is what I've been practically doing is just, you know, the platform um, is giving us, is, is giving us more opportunity to share with the world, you know, whereas, you know, I've been committed to go into the church house every Sunday where people right. don't see me every week, you know, via live stream, but now we're streaming live to where the whole world can, can see. And like I said, for me, my, my worship is my lifestyle, you know, how I exude Christ, what that looks like, you know, just serving others and um, reading my word and encouraging others. And, you know, um, right now, you know, it's, it's really like, I feel like it's a mandate for people to come to Christ. So what, how are we positioning ourselves or how we, um, how are we um, catering to that, you know, to bring people to the body of Christ, to bring people, you know, um, so that's, that's just where I'm at with it right now. Okay. And it's interesting that you said um, people watch you. Uh, that goes back to what you said earlier about your lifestyle, your work, you know, what people, what people see, they, you're drawing, you're drawing people. Um, yeah. So when we, when we as a people, have that intimate worship with God before we even get on a platform. Yeah. You can be outside the four walls and be a magnet. Yeah. To people yeah. that don't even know Christ. Yeah. And the reason why I, I was going slowly in with that is because I believe that there are some that actually think you have to wait until you get inside the four walls to worship when worship yeah. begins. Yeah. Yeah. Worship begins where you are. It's an intimate thing. Just you, you and the father. Yeah. You and yeah. the father. I, I believe there that. There was a young lady, uh, well, a coworker of mine uh, that I worked with when I started working for a speech therapy clinic. And mm -hmm. every morning, it's just, it's just natural for me to smile all the time. It's just my nature, you know, smiling and being joyous and um, coming in like, you know, just real bubbly, you know, and that's just my nature. And I have been doing that Un unconsciously, you know, um, for about six months. And so my co-worker next to me was just like, one day she was just like, how did you manage to walk in here every day and, and, and you're happy and it's like practically not 
a very happy place, you know, to be, right. you know, for for her, you know, it wasn't um, a very healthy place for her to be. And she had been struggling for a long time, you know, emotionally, everything, and just being there to work the job has been overwhelming for her and everything like that. And, um, and I just basically told her, honestly, it's the joy of the Lord, you know, like, uh, he gives me so much joy, even when um, there is nothing to smile about. You know, I may have been coming out of a situation where it was like I, I felt super overwhelmed or I felt like just throwing in the towel, like just I don't want to deal with it. But I just seem to just get this boost, this burst of um, joy um, and and, and I, I can move forward in my day, you know, knowing that the, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And so mm-hmm. she asked me just flat out, like, I want that. How do I get that? Right. So like, okay. So I'm like, oh, this, uh, you know, receive the Lord into your life. You know, ask Him. You know, there's things that in your life that you know that you know was wrong, and the way you know it's wrong is if you you've done it, you you've done it, and and, and it convicted you, um, and you knew it wasn't the right thing to do, but you did it. But you know, ask the Lord to forgive you, and uh, and and that's pretty much it. You know, accept Him as your personal Lord and Savior, and if you believe that he died on the cross for you, for your sins, you know, that's pretty much what you need. And she's like, and, and that's it? I'm like, that's it. Let's pray, you know, let's pray and just receive him in your heart right now, you know, and she accepted the Lord right then and there in our office, right. you know, just because I came in with a smile on my face for about six months, you know, and she wanted to know why was I always so happy, you know, and so we don't we don't know who we're, who we're touching by just being an example of Christ and just, you know, being our true authentic self, like Michael, you know, you just never know who who you're touching or who, you know, who you may come across. Right. It's interesting. Um, people like transparency. When I was looking at the, uh, the video for my concert today, you know, I was in the back. I missed most of it. And I, uh, I heard Michael on the video talk about how transparent I was with my, uh, with my testimony. Very um, and with uh, with poetry, Miss Diva, you have to be very transparent. Um, I noticed that you're a little different than some of the poets that that I've seen. Y'all know I'm straight no chaser, so I I, I can't be nobody but Eva. But uh, <laughs> um, I listen to words. Um, even when I hear a song, I, I listen to the lyrics. I listen to the words because if the words don't hit me here. Right. Sometimes it doesn't really have a meaning to me. So when I listen to your words and even the gestures that you make or the height of your voice with different words, it penetrates the heart and the minds of the people. Um, how has your poetry affected others? I know it probably started with you first, but how does it feel to bleed over the people with your words and your flow and to watch them interact with what you put out there? The first word I'll say is humbling. It's yes. very humbling yes. because <clears throat> as I've grown spiritually mm-hmm. through reading my word, praying, you know, daily, I, I, I try to be as consistent as I can. Right. And I've grown and well, I'm not looking for kudos, but I do want what the hearts of God's people to be penetrated. Mm-hmm. So I do pray before and I ask God when I'm before I write, what do you want me to say to your people? What yes. do you want me to say? God, use me. So it's humbling that God would would actually use me as a vessel. You know, I would say little on me, but ain't nothing little. <laughs> Ain't that little thing <laughs> about this thing? All right, it's all right. <laughs> to use uh, all of me, you know, yes. to in my heart, most of all, and my mind, and share in transparency. That there's that word again, transparency. Mm-hmm. That's what I believe penetrates. One of the things that penetrates when I'm there, and I find myself taking a breath, like an exhale after I'm done. I'm Mm -hmm. finding one. And that's how I sometimes have been been like, I'm one, it's almost like I step into another realm. Right. And I'm sure that as, as you know, minister music and both of you are, 
absolutely wonderful singers. You know, I'll say songstresses. I love that word. And when you you feel when you go into that there's a change in the atmosphere. I've actually yeah. experienced a shift when I was when where the Lord was using me. Mm-hmm. And I and I'll go to a different place, and I, I I want God to continue to to elevate that according to His will, because yeah. the deeper you want to go in people, God, I am totally at your at, at surrendering to God's will through what He wants to use me in words to do and spoken word and anything I can say with my mouth, my tongue, my tongue. The Bible yeah. says we have the power mm-hmm. to speak. Life and death with that we we he gave us the power to do that. So yeah. I am utilizing a, what's in the word. And there, it's a statement in the word scripturally that we so the words I want to be so careful, God. What do you want me to say to yes. your people? I want yeah. to always remain humble yeah. because I can't have this gift. I'm gonna keep saying I can't have this gift if it wasn't for him. Right. And and you you said something, Lady Eva, that is confirming. Sister Karen Thompson, one of our sisters, just our sisters, just said that to me the other day about my voice, yeah. the fluctuations in my voice. So that's why I smile when you said it, because I was like, wow, here, here I'm hearing it again. Yeah. And I, I thank God for it. And I in, in all humility, because there was a time that I was too I was not confident enough mm. to really dig into my to the poetry really? I would, yeah i would recite it and mm. i would use just my, my my the tone that that i'm not gonna say monotone but that there's a there's a there's a i remember a, a counselor told me one time he said i can't listen to you when i'm when i he said i cannot listen to you when i need to work mm. he said because my your voice is so relaxing it makes me want to go to sleep right. mm. so when i would recite poetry i was very docile, very gentle, usually. Mm-hmm. But when I began to write pieces that God was giving me, there had to be more of a drive and more passion. Mm-hmm. It's just mm-hmm. like when you're singing, I know y'all know what I'm talking about. There's a place you gotta place it strategically yeah. and be in tune with the spirit and with spoken word, it works the same way. If you, I'm gonna say this, when, what me personally, when I, I know I'm using my gift to the glory and honor of God, mm-hmm. you know? Now I write different types of poetry, you know, but when what the poetry where I'm totally glorifying God, there's a strategy that mm. I'm following with he, where He leads me to go. It's I don't even want Mikhail involved, other than to be the vessel. God used me, you know. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay, so it's interesting you said the word strategy because um, our Father is a strategic, strategic God. Yes. You know that's yes. what he is. Um, <laughs> You know, he 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 has a plan. I, I always say his plan is better than mine. Mm-hmm. It may not feel better, but it is better for us. It's just like being a parent. I'm not a parent, but I have 17 godchildren. It's just like being a parent. And you're you're a parent. Like, <laughs> it's like you say, you're, you're gonna do this. This is you're gonna you're gonna thank me one day. You're gonna thank me one day. You're gonna yeah. thank me one day. And the kid is like. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. You know right. Yeah, <clears throat> it, it, it brings me to um, the, the next segment of this. The next generation of leaders, the next generation of teachers. I watch you, Tasia, with uh, with the babies. That's my babies. I can't wait to bless them the way I really want to bless them. I watch you. They have a gift for music, but they also know the word. Yeah. They also know the word. I don't even have to hear them speak to know that you are teaching them the word. They're watching you, you know, they're 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 watching uh hubby and they when they sing, the oil just flows, especially that oil. She Lord have mercy. That's a leader from um, I don't know where, Lord Jesus. How important is it? (laughs) Yeah, okay, I'm back. So how important is it for for parents that have young children that have musical talents or anything creative uh, to teach them the word or to live by the word so they'll know 
how to use their craft. Did yeah. I say that right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it's you know what it's it's very 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 important, and uh, I've found a strategic way of not um, throwing the Bible at them, but mm -hmm. using situations and scenarios um, and the mistakes that they make or um, the challenges that they face to implement the word while teaching them how to um, be, how to, you know, when they, how to become resilient, how to learn from those lessons that, you know, um, if they made a mistake, how to learn from those things. You know, I always tell them when you make a mistake, it's only a mistake if you learn from it, you know, but if you're continually doing the same thing over and over again, then, you know, you're, you're just blatantly just intentionally doing these things, you know, and they, every, every choice that you make have, has consequences to them. So um, I'm constantly teaching them the word of God through different scenarios, different situations, different, you know, it, 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 it doesn't matter um, what's going on around. You always find a strategic way to implement the word. And no matter what you always, uh, pray, you know, teach them to pray. You know, there's been times where they were battling different things, you know, whether it was um, anxiety, whether it was uh, having horrible dreams, whether it whether it was um, having mean tears and feeling like, you know, um, you can't beat that or you can't stand up against that. Um, and prayer is really a major factor in our home, you know, um, and when they consistent, consistently pray, bringing every situation to the forefront, uh, they realize or they, um, uh, they experience a shift, they experience a change, they experience um, um, this supernatural strength to endure, to want to move forward to, you know, those dreams are now no longer happening or, you know, so uh, I don't want to, we don't throw the Bible at them. And um, now, they're in a place where they're grabbing the Bible on their own and they want to mm. search and they want to, you know, they're curious, you know, and just, and kids are listening, whether you think they're, they're not, you know, they have like radars or something in their ear. They can be like in a whole nother room and they can hear whatever it is that you're talking about. So when hubby and I have conversations or when we're having dialogue about the word or, or something, you know, they're listening, they're listening. And then, you know, they have questions later and, you know, we sit down and we have conversations. It, it's, it's a lot of talking, but um, it's very important to set the foundation because they'll appreciate it later. And yeah. they, they implement these things in their walk in the future and they don't even realize where it stems from. You know, um, it is just consistent practice, consistent, you know, teaching, teaching, talking. Um, I grew up in an era where, you know, they beat you and ask questions later, you know, and fortunately, fortunately, fortunately um, I learned because it was just a different generation back then. It was just a different upbringing. But I realized in this generation now, um, I don't know if that works too much. Um, for me, uh, I, I think they get a little bit more rebellious, not taken away from that disciplinary action, because there are some times where, you know, I'm a pop you because I need you to remember um, if I feel like you're not um, hearing me. But <laughs> but I, I do uh, realize that the talking, although it gets kind of annoying because you're so redundant, but the talking, um, it, it has more of um, an effect on my girls per se, because it allows them to think, you know, it allows them to, oh my gosh, well, that probably wasn't a good decision that I made, or that probably was wrong of me to do, you know, and I ask questions that triggers that, that triggers that thought, you know, those questions, you know, do you think that was okay? Like, why do you feel like you had to do that? Like, how do you benefit from that? You know? And then that's how we use those scenarios and those situations to bring the work, but it's very important. Please. Yeah. Lady E is frozen. <laughs> Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> Let it go. That's a mommy. <laughs> Let me tell you, Disney has always been my best friend. But since I've had kids, I mean, it's been more enjoyable because, like, we watch things all the time. Like right mm -hmm. now, I'm, I've been watching Princess and the Frog often, and you know, Incredibles too. Like that's my favorite. You know. Yeah. I'm just, and we are so I'm like old school cartoon. 
I'm so old. It's like I like the Bugs Bunny. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. that those are me. Yeah, that, 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 you tell me, tell me where that is, and then I can <laughs> I can find it and I'll watch it too because I miss right. those well. Right. You're back. You're back. You see how you see how that old devil tried to get up in here. I'm like, yeah, don't watch it. Hey, like, oh, they still there. They still there. They keep it. We carried on. Like we carried on. <laughs> We did. I my cartoon That's a for you. You know, we just never run away from it. We can never get away from it. Right. <laughs> right. So check this out. You guys are um I was I was waiting so waiting for Pastor Charles to get on, but you guys will be um doing a virtual concert on Saturday. Can you guys tell me a little bit about what's going on Saturday? Go ahead, Michael. Well, uh, our our <laughs> wonderful manager, <laughs> Pastor oh. William Charles, has uh, come up with the idea to have uh, myself and the beautiful Tage. I'm one of her biggest fans. <laughs> um, right. Thank you, sister. Uh, to have a virtual, I'll call it a concert of poetry and wonderful singing. Yay. And so this is what we're going to do. And uh, uh, I'll just go, I'll just carry on. Basically, it, it's an opportunity. We're living like we talked about in our maybe new normal. I don't want to give over too much power to that. Yeah. Um, but it's an opportunity for us to be able to minister in our own God-given ways. And we do want to, I'm sure Tasia will agree, we do want to reach the hearts of God's people, you know, and yeah. The wonderful thing about um, the time we're living in, even before the pandemic, I had been saying it, the, at our fingertips really is an opportunity to reach the world. Yeah. I can reach Africa. Right. And not not, not about me, but the words that what yeah. God uses to reach Africa, yeah. Russia, all of these places in seconds. Like it yeah. just doesn't, it's yeah. immediate. It's yeah. immediate and it's yeah. virtually recordable. You can sit, watch it. Even if you're not up, you can watch it again. You know, yeah. record right. is a wonderful thing, you know. Right. Hello. Um, <laughs> hey, you're back. I just like the way y'all looked on camera, just two people on the camera. So I just took myself out the studio and I'm just like, this looks <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> you look as you're chiming in and out. I don't know this is about nine o'clock. Yeah, it is right. right. <laughs> Don't be a jump out, whatever you feel like. Right. We got you. We got you. Okay. <laughs> so that's that that's what we're that's what the endeavor is. Um we're not the visionaries, but we are we are going to be carrying the visionaries uh idea. Vision we're going to be carrying the idea. Hang it out. Yeah, we're doing it. And I think it's so cool. I think it's pretty awesome because you know, yeah. um, for those of us who like to go to different programs, different concerts and everything like that, um, we're not able to do that right now. So it's like, okay, we can bring this to your home to where, you know, you can go in your living room, connect um, to your, you know, connect the devices to your TV or whatever, and just um, be able to have a concert in your own living room, you know, yeah. without having to go out into the world um, during this pandemic. So we're still bringing that concert vibe, those, things that we enjoyed doing um, mm -hmm. before the pandemic happened um, into our homes now. Um, and, and we're comfortable, you know, where we're on our couch and can be comfortable, but still get what we have been missing and what we have been wanting to do since, um, you know, um, California has been, you know, not, kind of sort of shut down, you know? Right, so right. It's been pretty cool to, you know, and to still have that uh, concert access um, online in our homes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put you guys on the spot. You know, I wrap it up in a minute. But I want to come back to you guys after the virtual, so we can talk some more and you know do this stuff on a regular basis. Um, if you guys have have any questions, your questions, if we don't get them, then, uh, right now we have Colette Cruz watching. We have Nisi Ward. We have. Oh, I'll see. Lil Oscar. You always be Lil Oscar to me. Uh, Adrena, Joy Simpson, Dwayne Johnson, Alex. Uh, Alex oh, God. Alex. I call her Alex. 
Taylor, Michael, Alexander, Deanne oh, Lewis, yeah. Elmer Bowie, Shannon Williams, my hey. mama watching, Jamie oh. King, Rosetta, <laughs> Tiffany. We got a lot of folks watching. So what I want to do right now is I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm going to do you diva first. Oh. I want you to talk to the creators. See, you never know what I'm going to ask you, right? You know, because I just don't write stuff down. I just say, download it, Lord. Come on. Okay, uh -huh. so, Diva, we're going to talk to the creators. Can you inspire them, encourage them in this season that we are in right now? You know, and this is kind of for both of you guys, uh, not to waste their time. I really believe that God gave us this time to reset. Mm -hmm. um, because we have put things on the back burner. I'm talking to myself first. He's given us the opportunity to reset. So can you inspire the creatives on um, resetting? And I'm going I'm to put it all on you. Me and Tasia finna disappear, so it's on you, Diva. <laughs> Here I go. To all the creatives, and even if you have been thinking about using any creativity, whether you are a writer, a painter, uh, and a speaker, or don't even know it. This is a time in our lives where the world has literally, if you've been doing it the right way, has slowed down. Even the air quality is better. We have a moment in time, and I'm going to speak it that way, a moment in time, however long this goes, we pray that it doesn't go very much longer, but for the time, whatever this is happening, the happenings of, of the world is like Eva said, there's a, it's a chance for a reset. This is a time for you to be creative, time to put pen to paper, time to take that brush and put it on canvas, time for you to do all those things you said, you know what, I want to, I, I want to write, I, I want to write a book, I want to, I want to write some songs, I want to try my hand at poetry. I want to knit something. I want to sew. I wonder what it would be like if I did this. You have the time. Utilize the time. You do not have time to waste, whether it's a pandemic or not. There is a purpose for you. I'm pointing at you. You. Point itself and say, I have a purpose. What is my purpose? God, what is my purpose? What is it you want me to do? Because you gave me hands, you gave me feet, you gave me eyes, you gave me the equipment for something. What is it you want me to do, God? And so I, I encourage every one of you, if you already know what your gift is, this is not a time for you to be sitting on your gift. This is not a time for you to be chilling out all the time, every day, wondering, tick tock, tick tock, when am I going to be able to get outside? This is a time for you to tick tock yourself into doing God, what God's business is and walking in your purpose. Your purpose doesn't have to always be outside the, the walls of your home. You can be discovering your purpose right now. You can build upon your purpose so that this, I'm going to say this one last thing, structurally, you may feel like you are in and closed in, but you're going to reach the world. You can reach the world. You can go live. You can share your gift to a magnitude of people you probably never would have reached or thought to reach. Open your mind, open your heart and receive what God has for you. You all have a purpose and I encourage you to get in it. Dig in it, baby. Dig in it. Love you from Diva. <laughs> I totally, totally, totally agree. <laughs> Where you at, E? Where you at? <laughs> she had, she had. So, Deja, um, speak to the worship leaders that uh, they may not be able to worship on a Sunday morning. And uh, speak to the how do they utilize arts? Whatever it is, it's on you. All right. Um. You were kind of in and out, but um, I think I got. Speak to Hart, I think you, I, I yeah. got a gist of what you were asking, and um, yes, man, I truly believe that um, God did not create this whole virus and the pandemic that we in that we're in right now. What I do believe is that He's taking this situation and turning it around for our good. Um, 
And what does that look like, you know, especially for a minister of music and a worship leader, um, speaking to all of the other, my co-worship leaders and um, my fellow minister of music, um, all of you guys out there. Um, this time for me too, um, I've been taking to really pray, you know, utilizing that time to to pray and to get more connected to God, you know, and some may say like, I probably don't have time to do that because, you know, especially those of us who have children, we're dealing with homework, we're dealing with house chores because they're tearing up everything. We have to um, cook and all these different things, but there has to be some type of balance right now where you pull away and um, you consecrate, you um, find a peaceful place, a safe haven, a quiet place to um, get into your word and um, sing praises to God. You know what I'm saying? Um, and now we're in a season where, um, like I said, we can definitely Oh, my girl, is it early pause? I'm going to do my deeper way. We're going we're gonna to get her back. I see her down there in the lower screen. She, she, we'll get her back. She, you know, so it's amazing how when we ready to say something really, really, really powerful, right? That it's just like, <laughs> but that's all right. That's all right. She's coming we, back. I should um, not be defeated. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. She, Tasha has a very interesting um, flow about her. There's not a lot of people, she'll pop back in in a minute. There's not a lot of people that I would let lead worship for me. Right. Um, I know Dwayne, Dwayne Johnson is one of them. Tasia Woods is one of them. Sonia <laughs> Griffin is one of them. It's yeah. a very selected few. Not that I don't love the voices, but I rather have the oil. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. Very important. Very My important. My godfather, uh, the late Pastor Ted Harris, used to always say, talent without the anointing is just an exercise. And I never really understood what he was talking about until I became a little older, a little wiser. Um, but we, we were talking about this the other day, Diva, about how when I go into different churches, I never really sit in the front. I'm always in right. the back. I right. love being in the back um, because I, I'm a people watcher. I'm a people watcher, but I don't. Um... <laughs> Here I go. Oh, this is my this is my live feed, huh? So it really doesn't matter. Um, I'm not really moved by a lot of the shout music. Shout music. If the oil is not in the room, it I just I feel nothing. Right. So uh, that's that. That, so, you know, I think we got Tasia back. She's back! Yeah! <laughs> I was telling her, Tasia, I said, you yeah. know something, I said, it's amazing that, right, I told her, it's amazing that when we, we all get ready to say something really, really powerful, that this little internet bug just try to come on in here and say something, you know, mm, mm. Right. I don't even know who you were when you cut right. off, but I remember you saying uh, something about this this pandemic it wasn't an accident yeah no what i was saying was that i don't believe that um this virus was god sent or god created what i do believe is that um he's turning this situation around for our good you know what i mean and yes. um it's definitely, I, I feel like it's a blessing in disguise you know um for those of us who are always going 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 and putting things on the back burner and not really uh, honing in on our on our gifts and our crafts, our talents, and everything like that. So this is an amazing opportunity to um, spend time to create and do those things. Like Michelle said, you know, she I couldn't have said it better. But um, yeah. this is time where a lot of our worship leaders and our ministers and music, music can get closer to God, get into the Word more. Um, you can sing songs, you can still sing songs online, and get people to engage with you and. You know, because everybody is great where they are and great 
with the gifts that God has given them. So they have, I, I would encourage you and mandate you to use that to reach the world, to touch the world in your own way, you know, the way that God has aligned it to be, has set it up to be. Um, to get into your word, and I know it's crazy, you know, and speaking to the parents too, you know, I know I have a lot of friends who are minister of music as, as well, who have children and who are married, and you know, it, 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 it gets a little complex because the children are home now, so, you know, like me, I have different levels, you know, different grade levels, and it, it gets a little tricky, you know what I mean? So it's like trying to find that time to even settle down, you know, um, but um, definitely find a place, find a peaceful place and find and make time um, in the day to spend with God. You know what I mean? Because I'm telling you, um, if it's that time where you eat and press, where you're down for the day, even if you're going to bed before you close your eyes, just find that time to spend with the Lord, get closer to him. You know, um, I, I believe that those of us who have been putting a lot of our writing and a lot of um, our creative um, songs, you know, on the back burner, you know, this is now the time to bring those to the forefront and yes. uh, said, be on, get online like we're online right now and sing songs and have people engage and come in with you and, you know, worship God and praise God like that. You know what I mean? So there's really no excuse in this season. Go for it. Well, I have definitely enjoyed you guys. Dwayne Johnson said, that's good, Tasia. <laughs> I love you, Dwayne. You are my, my husband and uh, Dwayne are really good. They're good friends. And uh, we, we watch all his we watch all his videos uh, from time to time. And Louis like, did you hear what he just said? You know, that was vital. That was right all the time. But he, he loves you dearly, uh, Dwayne. I just really, I love everyone. But you guys are um, super amazing. Thank you for having us, Eva. Yes, we hope to have uh, Dwayne on next Wednesday. I'm going to try to make this a regular uh, thing. Tomorrow is a National Prayer Day, so let's you know, let's pray. Let's pray around the clock. We should be praying anyway. But uh, Lady Sherry Trailer is going to head something up. I was hoping I could probably talk to her before she does it, but maybe we'll do a recap with her to see how everything um, went. For those of you who are watching on Facebook. You guys, make sure that you uh, click the little notification button at the top so you know when we go live. I'm going to be doing a lot of pop-ups. Um, so, you know, I move in silence. When it happens, it happens. When it don't, yeah. it don't. But we love you guys. Uh, we'll be praying for you guys. We'll do a recap after Saturday to see how it goes. Everybody, make sure that you guys tune in um, to their live um, their live. Thing on, um, let me put it back up so y'all. We'll, so we'll, 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 yeah. um, we'll let forward manager group, right. yeah, forward yeah. manager, and um, yeah. we'll share it on our page as well as it's yeah. going on, so everybody will be able to have access to it. Um, yeah. but definitely we'll we'll give you a heads up before that day, so look out for the for that notification, and um, okay. we just hope you guys all chime in and just be blessed. Okay, so we'll probably repeat this on Friday since you guys are going to be doing this Saturday. Just to give yeah. you guys a brief reminder, she's going to go back and add uh, their Facebook links, their Facebook pages, all the contact information. Let's support each other. Let's love yeah. each other. You got a little extra? Throw them a little something. Throw them a little something. You know, you're throwing it on good ground. I love you guys. I'll see you yeah, guys on the next time. We Love you. Love you. <laughs> Diva, love you, thank you, love you.